All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Panther Airsoft Holding Table Talk. This is episode 82, and this is going to be showcasing um, British Columbia Airsoft Marksmanship Federation, also known as BCAMF. Uh, our guest today will be talking to Michael, and um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name properly, but how do you pronounce your last name, Michael? It depends if you're Josh or a dirty American. Uh, if you're a dirty American, it's Jopsy or Jobs. Okay. And if you're Dutch, Jopse. Jopse. Oh, I like how he okay. threw in the accent there too. It was All good. All right. So welcome to the podcast here. Um, we've wanted to do this for a while. I know you've wanted to jump in here. And uh, it's a good opportunity to jump in here because um, we've already advertised your course for next, next week, uh, April 10th. You'll be hosting the... Um, Infantry or airsoft or airsoft infantry training course that you had going here. Sorry, let me get the flyer here. So it says here <laughs> Introduction to Airsoft Infantry Training and Readiness. Yes, so that is on April 10th, and it is a $30 course. Uh, again, guys, uh, if you're interested in learning from a Marine, um, we're going to be going over a lot of these things uh, over the course of a couple of minutes here, and we're going to be introducing Michael. So, Michael, welcome to the show. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then who is uh, BCAMF? Sure, sure. Uh, former uh, combat veteran uh, from the United States Marine Corps. I served uh, 10 years, uh, deployed with uh, infantry, worked my way up through, uh, through E4, and I made it to uh, recon Battalion, was in Recon Battalion for two and a half years, majorly uh, made the jump after training and went to, uh, deployed one deployment with uh, Marine Raiders. And then after that, uh, uh, I'd say decisions about uh, future goals. And I decided to go back to the infantry for, for, for better men of myself and mm -hmm. uh, really connecting with, with the guys and with the guard of the training. Wow. And then as for BCMF, uh, it's a civilian fun way to carry on that tradition, um, whether it's uh, Marine Corps training or the aspect of just being a better airsoft player and learning more technical skills. Yeah, all right. Um, so you said um, earlier that it was a good way of sort of transitioning to civilian life. Was that sort of... Yes. Um, the like one of your sort of uh, main stake into starting BCMF is helping veterans um, transition to civilian life after yes. after serving. Oh man! So one of the main aspects of military service is we miss the camaraderie. We miss the ability to be with like-minded individuals, all the tomfoolery, all the excitement, fun, all the you know uh, closeness you get. What we don't miss is all, you know, BS, bureaucratic, red tape, higher up. So airsoft and paintball is a great exercise. You're still utilizing the same skills and you have that sense of community. Uh, for me, being in, in, in combat uh, for the majority of, of my years of service, at least six years of direct combat over, I want to say, three, four hundred engagements, um, it takes a toll. Um, PTSD is a very real thing it's always been a concern of mine and it's very interesting it's it seems almost counterproductive that you you do infantry you do these things and then you play a game with toy guns and it sounds very counterproductive and people are like oh no but believe it or not once you understand this is a toy you have fun it takes you back to the innocent days when you're a child when you're youth playing cowboys uh -huh. and cops and robbers and the interesting thing is we are we have this predisposition to play scenarios and games to where we're the hero, to where we do something that brings out the best in us. And that's what this game, that's what this hobby is about. That's what the sport is about in this community. So for, for me, and I know a lot of veterans um, that have played, you know, uh, whether it's in, in my home country or up here, is that we all feel the same way. And it's, and it's a way that you can, relive those glory days but also at the same time have fun and you see the younger generation do the same thing and, it, and it's almost like passing down this honorable tradition and gameplay and um 
like if you ask anyone if they play Copper Robbers as a kid, every single generation will tell you yes. And that's the same thing with airsoft and paintball. It's great. Yeah, if it wasn't for the sense of camaraderie, I would be very lost in who I am as a person today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to segue to that, um, I know you were part of um, when it came to combat C21, you were part of that group that were helping to combat C21 um, when it comes to the airsoft ban. You were our sort of um, leader, or not leader, like our, our spoken voice when it comes to the veteran community. Um, so how was that like dealing with having to deal with having something that you were there, you know, to deal with PTSD, to dare to transition to civilian life, um, to be all of a sudden just like, you know, you know, taken away from you? Oh, I was, I was so upset and it's really interesting. Um, just to, 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 uh, take a step back for a second. The reason why BCF also exists is I don't know if Mac remembers, remembers this, but we had a conversation, I think it was four years ago. And it was about importing a particular platform that uh, I was like, you know, I know this platform so well. I use the Marine Corps. And I'm like, how come I can't do this? And he said three digits to me that still to this day make me angry. And he said three, six, six to 500. Mm. I couldn't fathom this. As, as you know, <laughs> I remember when I first met Mike, he's like, Yeah, I try to, like, hey, yeah, exactly. You gave me your story, and I was like, Wow, that's really awesome for you to be here. And then, yeah, it was like, oh, Sorry to break sorry. the Canadian laws. Yeah. And then <laughs> when he did that, I was like, What? I said immediately. And then I started doing some research, and I realized that um, there was only one established nonprofit at the time, and that is the Ontario. Uh, uh, Quebecois Federation of Paintball and Airsoft. Mm -hmm. They were yeah. the oldest organization. And as far as I knew, they were the only organized nonprofit or organization at all in yeah. all of Canada. And I was like, okay, so they're, they're more of the gameplay side and field promotions and stuff like that. No one lobbied together to create a community. So I was like, this has got to get done. Within 48 hours, I already had my business plan. I was ready to go, hit the ground running. I was deployed. I was trying to talk to people. And people were like, whoa, who is this guy from America coming here telling us what we shouldn't do with the sport? <laughs> we're under the radar. Leave it alone for right now. I'm like, the day's going to come. I felt like I was chicken little running around the communities and say, it's going to happen. We need all these it dollars. Was, yeah, yeah, and, people, yeah. and people were like, dude relax that's great you want to do your thing whatever i'm like mm -hmm. okay 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 and the next thing i know it i'm getting all these phone calls two years later and everyone's like what do we do and i'm like this is what we do this is who we talk to this is the plan yeah. lobby 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 let's move forward and protect the sport and at the same time it was like this is what i also love about airsoft is that you have we have this symbiotic relationship of planning spirit an ideology of what we want for the sport and we're separated by you know thousands of kilometers so you notice how i'm using actual canadian measurement systems i think i've been here long enough I'm i was gonna myself. say like wow he's even yeah. got that down yeah well i have to well the military anyway. trains you in metrics so 800 meters m16 a2 or the m4 that is as <laughs> long as engagement distance that's the extent but anyway so this symbiotic relationship where we all have the same great idea and that's great. And then shortly after that, after we've already been on board for two years as a nonprofit, I started seeing more and more come out. And then when, when Bill C21 hit, it was great to be a part of that, to help drive people, ask the important questions, light the fire under certain organizations and people and offer advice. Uh, and since then, it's great. Um, there's uh, a promotion company uh, that's here in BC that does airsoft events. I helped set them up with uh, our own BC nonprofit organization. So, you know, BCMF is more the sports side and, 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 and veteran outreach, whereas this organization, which is um, the BC Airsoft Association, uh, will handle British Columbia's nonprofit and there's a lot of talk in the background and we have all these different groups, you know, from far up North to, to us at almost near the border yep. uh, to, to Vancouver Island and Kamloops and, and further. Yeah. I actually haven't heard much from them right now, but I do want to get them in one day when they're all set up. 
Yes. Um, it, it did come into fruition after um, C21 was, uh, like, you know, dropped onto our table. And um, it was a mm -hmm. banding of all the BC community groups. And I'm yeah. like, wow, that's... Yeah, with you with your help too, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're you're in the scene first. What is it? 2019. I see uh, your nonprofit site is registered under S0071171. Yeah. So and... so officially and remarketed in 19 and 2018, we started doing real steel training camps mm. with some aspects of airsoft, but unfortunately, because of the gun ban, that was another hit. Oh. Uh, but we won't go into that. This is okay. airsoft. This is Airsoft. Yep. Um, so I completely turned focus and just wanted to do Airsoft and Airsoft. Okay. Um, it's an easier platform. It's a safer platform and people of all ages, you know, can get involved. I just this past weekend, I saw uh, someone's grandfather out there, 72. Um, and he was given her. He was given her. So it's good. It's good. Okay. That's good. Um. <sighs> Mac Tack, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, I was gonna be like, yeah, you breathe, boy. You can <laughs> and, 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 um, awesome. You know, Mike. Yeah, really great for you to break down your like your history there and your service record is like I know you were being very uh, polite there, but uh, there's a lot more in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, trying to keep this towards airsoft, appreciate all of the the history and ov obviously knowledge that that you have from kind of real world experiences. Um, Fundamentals, Mac. Fundamentals. And, yeah. Minding the cringe factor when it comes to LARPing army. <laughs> you know what army stands uh, for, right? Oh, sorry, Marines. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but when we're, uh, when it comes down to airsoft and everything, my question to you was, um, you know, just as an American, because I mean, uh, airsoft was around prior to it and stuff. Did you have a start to airsoft prior to your service as a child and stuff like that or were you more of uh like did you use it as a transition to civilian life after service and everything well the interesting thing is that uh, i first joined the infantry in 1998 mm -hmm. so we went uh straight to shooting real steel yeah like uh, the... as, as an 18 year old but then on weekends and stuff at camp lejeune there was actually um paintball so okay paintball. so the, okay so you started with paintball i mean a lot yeah, yeah a lot of us back yeah. then in those earlier times that was the the thing so that's where you kind of got your first kind of experience into that and everything and then yes um, and and no offense to paintballers don't like it Do not paint. <laughs> uh the, the 50 cal the older 50 cal like like hard balls oh man that was brutal that was a brutal mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. um but then actually when when i was on leave i'd, I'd go and visit my mom because uh, she relocated to the midwest in ohio um she's got a 45 acre ranch at the time mm -hmm. and i'm like huh i can put a paintball field here <laughs> or, you know, and then airsoft started coming on the scene i'm like this is amazing and this is a really good training tool um mm -hmm. it's it's so much better because like there's there's certain things that happen in in real steel when it comes to training that that angers me and certain people certain aspects of training that people think is doctrine and it's not doctrine. It's because they're trying to find a cheaper way to, to qualify or to train. But with Airsoft, I mean, a kilo of BBs, uh, what, 0.2 is, is what, 19 bucks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. It's super That's inexpensive insane. compared super to the ammo. And, and, it's, and it's great. And you can also do force on force training. And in the military, uh, Army had miles and they had a lot of other programs and they had the budget. So I, rem I remember when we were doing force on force at Camp Lejeune, we actually had like these really old, like bright colored and some translucent like M16s that we were using shooting each other. And it wasn't necessarily for training, but it should have been. You know, we're in the <laughs> barracks clearing, shooting each other. But uh, in all serious Marines being Marines. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> A lot of inappropriateness. But um we use that as training. And I'm like, I was thinking to myself, it was probably, you know, it was in about four or five years. I'm like, this would be great to use, you know, in, 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 in other aspects. Um, but I never had the chance uh, mm. 
I was just mostly deployed overseas. And it wasn't until I came back that uh, I sought it out as, as a way to deal with my PTSD and find the social aspects I was missing in my life. Of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then that leads into my next question there is, um, so when you got back and you started rotating out and everything like that, um, explaining from your adjustment there, um, did you, uh, when, when was, and how was your first experience, uh, playing airsoft as it was? And, and when was that for you? So my, my first airsoft game, I was actually, I, I haven't touched a rifle or, or, or real steel, and I, I believe it was four plus years ago, um, right before we started the real steel, um, a buddy of mine from work, Sean Duxter, um, he, he brought me a Panther. Oh. And he, he had a spare M4. It looked all jacked up. I was like, well, it looks better conditioned than my service rifle. So I didn't care. <laughs> and then I'm like, it feels weird. The balance is slightly off. You tell, me, you tell me, you tell me, no, no, no. It was actually, it was a full steel. Okay. Wow. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was full it's steel. Probably heavier. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm looking at it. I'm like, it still feels a little off. And then I take the magazine. This magazine is super light. I'm tapping it on my head. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I just want to make sure I loaded it properly. You know, it's a lot of these nuances and things that, <laughs> um, that you discover. It's like, you know, <clears throat> when you've been in the military for so long, you know, no matter what you do, especially if you've been in the infantry, you, you can, you can hug your child and hug your, your, your significant other, you know, pick up a broom, pick up a box, whatever, but your hands always, always remember the rifle. Mm. It's just so, so, so uh, embedded. It's the nomenclature. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at the field battery going, whatever. We're about to go to the safety speech. The damn thing does not work. It doesn't, it doesn't cycle. It smells kind of funny. I heard a popping sound. I just can't get smoke in my Right? Right? And I'm just like, I'm like, I saw, I start smelling it. I'm like, okay, it smells like Camp Lejeune. What's the big deal here? So, <laughs> um, no. I'm just shaking my head. No. Elliot, Elliot walks by and, and sees us and he just stopped. And John's like, hey, uh, he, my buddy's guns all jacked up. And then uh, he introduced me and who I won, and who I was. And Elliot didn't know me from Adam. The first time I stepped on the field, he has no idea if I'm really military or not or whatever. You know, there's always crazy stories out there mm-hmm. about people. And um, he goes, he goes right into into the shop. And that's when you guys first got your your newer combat machines. They were like all tan, brand new. The tag is still on it. He hands it to me and a high cap. He's like, "Have at it. Let me know how you how you." How you feel? Oh, these were the and, new rentals back then. Yes, I remember yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, four years yeah, ago. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then I remember that me. shipment. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just like, "That's awesome!" Like I've known this guy like thirty seconds, and he's just like almost like it's kind of like taking your shirt off your back for something, you know. And that's the sense of of community that you know all of you guys foster there. And I was like, "Wow, this is pretty pretty good." And even something minor like that, you know, I've had a tough go. And, and, in life and trials and tribulations and also migrating to this country but that was like one of the biggest moments i think of first coming into the sport i was like damn this is cool i think i found it found a home nice rest of the day was interesting but you know we'll go into that a little bit later <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah um yeah panther panther was great and and i had a great time um it helps me bring me out of out of my shell because like first time picking up a rifle and you're pointing at someone it's 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 a weird feeling mm, that must be uh, definitely a really yeah that must have been a hard yeah. kind of transition oh, for you it was it was it was completely hard uh well if you guys you guys want to go into it yeah uh, only yeah, if you'd yeah, like yeah, to yeah, unpack yeah, yeah, it no, like, i don't i don't want so, you to feel uncomfortable no 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 so so we started going into it and then um the it was tack and defend cabins do you guys remember when the trench used to be right past cabins down that hill right before you cross over into across the creek yep yep Uh, so i had it down there and i people were posting up and defending cabin and we actually went with like five guys from my place of work so it was like a big thing to kind of get me out and to play the sport which is another good thing anyway everyone's posting up i start hearing people yell hit 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 whatever people are pushing up along the river so i'm like oh man so like i get into the bunker no one's into the bunker um 
and then I see a couple of guys, you know, shooting their fancy cry text. They're shooting really far and shooting, shooting, shooting. And then all of a sudden my buddy, Sean, who's like maybe um, 15 yards in front of me, he calls hit and something just pops in my head and I hear people running up and like, I hear the BBs pinging everywhere. It's a very immersive moment, but at the same time, it was like, that's my boy. He just got hit. Mm. No, he's not hurt, but he's out of the game. And that's when the training came in. And I kid you not, not to toot my old horn, I had rifle up, came out. Within eight to nine seconds, already down two players. I was, I was you know, armed down on the zone, third one, yeah. coming up. I popped him. I, I apologized to him afterwards, but I shot him in the throat. It's very Canadian um, of you. <laughs> very Canadian. I, I shot him. I got him right in the throat. And then I charged up a hill, took around a couple of guys. And then finally someone pinged me and I paused. And then I got pinged again. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I got to put my hand up and call hit. <laughs> but it was that instant where I'm like, ooh this is interesting because you gotta like, get that rush yeah yeah you got that rush and it's like it's it's a part of or an aspect of my personality you know quote unquote you know for, for better term um violence of action yeah. that i was missing and it got the adrenaline going and the adrenaline dump that happened immediately afterwards was the most calm and serene i was for probably two three years and i went through three years of extensive therapy after my last tour and mm-hmm. um I was like, wow, this is great. You know, you know, originally, you know, when I first got there and I saw, you know, like little kids, you know, walking around with AKs, it kind of freaked me out a little bit for a second. And I'm like, really? I was like, oh, wait, no, I seen that kid before, that kid before in my neighborhood, you know, so it was all good. But yeah, that first game really, you know, definitely anchored me into the community and I loved everything about it and talking with everyone out there and how the inclusivity that environment that you guys foster is absolutely amazing. You know, hats off to you guys. Mm. Okay. Okay. Much appreciated. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. I, I got one for you. Hoorah. So we've been, let's see here, seeing you at the field for like, like we were saying around four, four years now, four plus years coming yeah. up. Um, you know, I know you yourself have uh, dealt with uh, the, uh, like you said, you explained to us your first day experience airsoft there. Um, so when it comes to your airsoft guns, are you the type of person, you know, with your background and stuff like that, being meticulous and taking care of everything yourself? Or are you the type of person to go and uh, take it to a tech? Or have you yourself now become the tech? Oh, man, it really <laughs> depends on the aspect. Um, the severity of the problem severity of the problem um so my first my first rifle uh, i'll give you the story so i went out i was like after that game and playing i immediately like any gun ho person that's new to the sport went immediately online and i'm like i want to buy a platform Mm -hmm. but then i was overwhelmed i wanted something real i didn't want something that was too light you know and if and and performance wise i'm like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. money doesn't trump scale i understand that and that's always my motto so what i wanted to do is i wanted to go with something that was akin to what i used Mm -hmm. so i'm like i hate to say it m4 yep yeah of course yeah no it's all good yep i mean you got 10 years in this you're not going to switch to an ak now yeah Uh, (laughs) one day one day one day i mean let's just get a picture of him it and then you know like. that'll be that'll be hard, terrible I'll, I'll lose my dual citizenship <laughs> <laughs> um so it had to be m4 mm. metal and it could not be an m lock rail oh, okay okay did Just, you originally have the smooth handguard that you hated and suffered through or did you go for the cack rail okay so i want to know this yeah oh god so boot camp mm-hmm. M16, not A1, not A2, M16. So from there, yeah, I see your face. I know, I know. School of Infantry, M16 A2. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, we're switching it around here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so advanced. Um, the first time I put an adjustable um, uh, stock on a platform, we were like, this is the coolest thing ever. 
Oh my well. God, I could collapse yeah. this thing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because so not everyone has, you know, and, and there's also uh, uh, biomechanics behind how long you're supposed to have your stock based on how long the actual arms are. If your mm. arms are between 26 and 28 inches long, it's supposed to be the second click. And there's a bunch of reasons for it. I go through in my course. Um, but then it was really funny that it wasn't until after selection and assessment and getting into recon that I touched my first time before. Oh, okay. So I was I was already um, going on five years of service before even upgrading. That's how bad, you know, budget wise we are. We are getting Man. yeah, yeah. Like well, the it. Marines yes. definitely make so do with what they have. That's what you guys no, are known no. for. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Less is more, and, and all that. Um, so yeah, so so full metal mm-hmm. uh, M four. And then I started looking, I was like, man, how come nothing comes with batteries anymore? I'm like, what is this, Radio Shack selling all this? So <laughs> it's like batteries sold separately. And I'm like, I was, in, I was infuriated, but guess what? I talked to, I, can't, I wish I remembered who's got this guy's name right now, but he's uh, located out in Toronto Airsoft. And I was going through, I actually, I was like, I hate the web. I want to feel more interpersonal connection. I told him who I was, what's my experience. Mm-hmm. I was like, what can I get? So he's like, well, if you're new to the sport and you want an all bundle, he actually sold me a SeaTac. He sold me a SeaTac SR15 with mm-hmm. battery and charger, mm-hmm. with shipping and everything, and only paid about I think it was four twenty. Oh, wow. that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Very, very yeah. entry. Very is, entry. Wow. With that's shipping. Very, that's, with shipping. I, that's with really shipping. good. Wow. I, I, you know, I wish I had kept the sales receipt because there was a little note on there, and I don't know if he like took anything off of it, or whatever. But uh, I get it, full metal, great, classical stock, Knights Armament quad rails. Ooh. Oh, I was so happy. You don't understand. Everyone's like, oh, quad yep. rails. Oh, yep. my hands hurt. I'm like, grow thick skin. Um, <laughs> grow thick skin. Or they make attachment for it. But um, yeah. it was great. The, S- the SR platform was almost an exact copy. The interesting thing about um, um, SeaTac, it's actually uh, – um, uh, what's that company? Uh, a VFC rebrand. That's all it is. And because I, I took I took a, a, a buddy of mine, he had a VFC and I looked at, did the measurements. I'm like, huh, not only can I build this, but these are the same. And that's what got me interested in, in teching and trying to find things out. But the bad thing about it is, is that it was, it was underperforming, even though um, <clears throat> 366 and all, um, this was below it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, how did this get in? It's how did this right. get in? It's a yeah. sticker, right? It's all yes. a sticker. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. It's a big border. To, okay? yes. Big border doesn't big want border. you to have everything. Exactly. So um, I attempted to take it apart. You know, I racked her, separated it. I'm like, what is all this inside of it? I'm like, there's a gearbox here. You know, where's where's my bulk carrier group? Where's all this stuff? And I'm like, you know, <laughs> what is going on here? The charging handle almost broke the first time. My charging handle, like, and every time, like, oh, the first no. time I it, you know, you know, I'm loading the mag, I'm tapping it, you know, I'm pulling the charging handle. My buddy's like, why do you keep doing that? And I'm like, it's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> he's, like, to do. he's like, he's like, and then he takes it from me, clears it, puts it in, squeezes the trigger. I'm like, well, that's no fun. And then he opened my eyes to GBRs, and then I started looking at price. Oh, uh, like, no, sir. Oh, that's no fun. That's oh, fun. wait, price of fun. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. But then, um, wait, he had a GBLS. Sorry, he had no, a no, GBLS. No, no, no. He had right. an AEG, and, and then AEG. had the conundrum of figuring out how not real an AEG oh, is. Oh, okay. And then yes. he was like, okay. I'm looking for a GBBR. And then oh, then a GBBR, the sorry. Then he looked at the price tag of a GBBR and he cried. Yeah, absolutely. I'll throw you mine like, whenever you want. So, <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, that would give him some memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then I, I was just like, yeah, this is too much for me. So I, I played with it instead and, and I, I ran it really hard until she started breaking, started hearing, you know, a lot of rattling inside. Um, it was, I worked her so hard. I think I, I think the first season by my sixth trip out to Panther, I probably put, I want to say eight, 9,000 rounds through, you know, and then she was, she was falling apart. She was falling apart. Put her and to then, work. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I do, I do a lot of shooting drills and, and just, you know, honing the skill sets and, and, and all that. But unfortunately I didn't have the means to, to update it. So I actually took it to, to trigger and I drew up the specs and what I wanted. And they looked at me crazy because I was, I was drawing cylinder sizes, bore sizes, you know, changing diameters. And they're like, this is way too advanced. Here's some Lonex parts. Here's this, here's your, here's your piston. And I'm like, what's that one doing? And it's like, oh, that just, you know, instead of it being flat, it's a little more concave, so you have more pressure. And I'm like, magic. Yeah. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and here I am designing a, a, a completely like, Frankenstein system and they're just like you're crazy so instead I had them work on my mind it was great um lasted for a couple of years pulled that gearbox out and then I finally built my dream DMR from mm. scratch that I put in and unfortunately it's no longer field legal oh. because right now point two is she's shooting 490 damn oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I use her mostly for my marksmanship stuff, and then I have uh, another kit that I need to put in. Yeah, and it wasn't until this past year, it took a year and a half for me to work on this project that I built um, a rifle more akin to my service. So I built a, a new M4, but uh, using a lot of uh, custom parts that pay homage to the people in the industry mm -hmm. or my time, my time of service, and. Um, that was my project gun and because of materials and how you know quality control has gone downhill in the industry overall uh pre-covid and now it took a long time to build but yeah we did we did showcase it too when you were complete when you completed yeah, building complete oh build, yeah that's yeah. right that's right yeah. that's right in the airsoft yeah 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 that was an that awesome was, that, that, that was, was an was, awesome build yeah oh that handguard is so just so cool yeah yeah Yep, and I can use it for a real steel if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I guess shall we dive deep into? Uh, yeah. Well, that was yeah. enough. Of Mike's yeah, that was history. <laughs> I mean, Mike's I history. Yeah, I was too personal with him. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, awesome. Um, with your background, this really fits into what BCMS goals are. Um, because of what you explained there. Um, in terms of uh, you know what how how you experience airsoft and then going into it now now you, you're you're running a bcmf or we're just calling it airsoft marksman federation um so what is your base goals for uh bcmf um I, I i saw you quoted alexander the great here and i actually like that quote because i like the classical era i, I just want to read it to you um I, i'm sure you know which quote it is but oh yeah without knowledge skill cannot be focused without skill strength cannot be brought to bear and without strength, knowledge may not be applied. Alexander the Great. That's mm -hmm. a great quote. It, it's basically mm -hmm. a, a big sort of loop yep. into, you know, a life cycle of what it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with, with your background and experience with, uh, with uh, 2nd Battalion, 8th Regiment, uh, U.S. Marine Corps, um, that held the, that, did that help uh, pave the way for your knowledge of what you have now and uh, going towards uh, BCMF? I'd say, I'd say a lot of it. Um, my, the training manuals that uh, we offer our students and that are given out on courses or for digital download, um, they, they cover the breakdown on how we do things in the core, how we uh, assimilate the, the information and, and how we you know, drive it home, so to speak. Um, the quote itself is, is, there's a lot there behind of it it's um you know not to sound cliche but like you know the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with that single step yeah. um in the marine corps that single step is you know when you put your feet on those yellow footprints that's where the path of knowledge begins um and then you begin with that discovery of your own abilities and, and you know they take the proverbial jar head of yours and fill with everything you, that you need to make you successful and in the process you discover a lot more about yourself and your abilities that's the philosophy that we carry through at BCMF. Um, my, my, my number two, uh, uh, Alfredo, uh, call sign zero, um, he's really helped me find that inner peace and that, and that, and that direction in that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, without him, I don't think I would have had the drive. I probably would have uh, 
backed off a lot and just been a regular player and, and not offer, you know, my knowledge, I guess, or, or wanting to have that ability to share. But um, in, the, in the core and how we deal things in, in, in BCMF is it's first the, the shock and awe. So the, so the first phase of training is about breaking you down, shedding and separating that ego from, you know, your physical form, so to speak. So by doing this, you can learn what I call the adaptive response. Adaptive response is like the chain in brain activity that is designed to maintain um, homeostasis. So essentially you become instinctual and your ability to improvise, adapt and overcome comes down to a mere milliseconds for decision-making. And you can apply this in your daily life, not just within Airsoft. There is a philosophy that we carry through on the field and off the field. And that's something that Zero has tried to maintain and really push in the industry with his own project with BCMF and, and help me as well. Cause um, I was lacking that for a number of years, you know, due to everything that's been going on in the world. Um, and, and lastly, that, that last aspect without strength, knowledge cannot be applied. So essentially you have to actually possess the, you know, the fortitude, the conviction to be honorable. So if not for everyone else, but, you know, start with yourself. So it's more than just doing right in the moment. It's about courage. It's about stepping forward and doing what is right. Um, and that is actually the driving force uh, what got me involved in Bill C-21. Um, mm. I, I wrote a very lengthy letter to Bill, Bear, Bill Blair and, and, and contacted his office, as well as I think I've, I tagged the prime minister in so many different posts and, and, and in a letter. And, you know, I really wanted to drive that home, but, you know, unfortunately fell, fell uh, on, on, on deaf ears, but you could still be honorable and have integrity in the community. Don't do, you know, dumb crap. Yeah. Follow the rules. Be that beacon in dark times. Mm -hmm. And that's what our organization is about. That's what we try to instill in, in our members and our trainees and then so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Well, that, thank, thank you for that introduction. Um, that would, that would, you know, uh, that was really good. Uh, let's see here. Um, I would like to get into, uh, the, well, so, so you mentioned you had another, uh, member or like your number two. Mm -hmm. Um, so how many, um, is, is it like, uh, I guess to start off with how many members are there for your, um, federation and um i guess as well as uh if you want to if if you'd like to get into it how many people are part of your sort of administration because are or are you solely doing this between yourself and your number two so in in our organization um at the time of filing we had our our three core group uh and then we branched out and we are bringing on the fourth but People have to also understand that BCMF is not just local. Mm -hmm. um, I have cadre that I served with that's reintegrated into their own countries of origin. So BCMF operates under other names and other organizations in South America. Um, in Alberta, I have a small group. Uh, and even as far as, as Israel as well. But uh, predominantly, we have some big, huge numbers. I don't know if you guys follow Airsoft in Brazil, but it is huge. Yep. It yep. is booming. Um, some of my guys are actually uh, doing a lot of action air competitions. Um, we have, I think, the, in the top 10 international, I think three of our um, cadre scored and, and, and did really well. Uh, they're within the top 10. So that's, 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 that's huge. But um, locally, uh, the business side of things and promotion, it's, it's mostly myself um, okay. behind the scenes coming up with um, really driving home the ideology and my support system. It's really two of us. Um, website was done between myself and, and my number three. And then mm -hmm. uh, recently the new person that I'm, I'm bringing in um, he has an experience um, in real steel. Um, 
I really want to get him involved with Airsoft. He played Airsoft when it first came out, but it hasn't mm. touched since then. I'm trying to drive that home. He's, he said he's afraid that he's going to get addicted to it again, and then he's going to have to buy a new kit that's mm. strictly for Airsoft. And he just finished buying everything that he needs for, for Real Steel. It's so okay. Just look him directly <laughs> in the eyes and hammer mm. it home, and just let him know that a 12-year-old kid named Jimmy is just going to take him out when he thinks he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, so all, all, all that All that gear. All that gear. Yeah. 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 Okay, how gets good, you. how fast mm. you are! Uh, He's gonna come yeah. up and be like, "I shot you!" Oh, oh man, oh, yeah. it, it gets me like every every time. Like, oh, oh, so you know, do, like, don't hold back, don't be afraid. You know, um, mm. the biggest. I think problem when uh, all, as well as that I find with most people when you're trying to bring them in is the fear of being shot. Right? Mm. Um, yeah. If they can get over that fact and just, I'm not saying that you need to be uh, masochist and enjoy you know pain and whatnot, but I'm just saying you, you know if you if you can deal with the fact that hey it's gonna hurt a little bit, uh, you you know you're gonna have a great time. But uh, I get it, I get it. The idea is not to be shot in in you guys' uh, background. So yeah, I, I totally get it. It's like oh hello. Oh, hit. Oh, good one, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, secretly muttering other things under your breath. <laughs> the crazy thing is we actually secretly um, idolize the younger generation because they, they're they so um, desensitized with video games that they just run out and go, 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 go. Oh, they'll shoot you. They don't care. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Here yeah. we are using tactics, being safe, not, not shot. <laughs> We're like 15 minutes into like, you know, this, this game, we're right at the objective, everything's fine. And all of a sudden you see this whole troop of little minions running out blah, 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 blah. and it's like, yeah, I guess we're hit. We made it. <laughs> yeah, well, I well. guess, I, I guess we're dead. Yeah. Well, well. yeah. And then it's that and, easy. And, and, yeah. And it's funny. It's like, okay, this BB just caught the corner of my BDUs. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hit. It's a hit. I have to call it. it. Yeah, I know, right? Damn like, it. They're yeah. fast. You know, they're fast. I'm and they're the that. size of cover. Honestly, that's yeah. the thing that gets me with kids yeah. all the time. I'll be like scanning and it's like, you know, like, yeah, come on. I looked man. at that I, barrel. I looked at that barrel. barrel. And then all of a no, sudden there's some exactly. kid crouching behind it. It's like, oh my Not God. crouching, just standing. Just standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. But, but it's good too because some of these kids, they, do, they don't have the necessary um, training. Situational um, awareness, yeah. Yes, exactly. it's yeah. definitely about situational awareness. Um, one incident uh, a couple of months back, we were in Kill House, and this one kid was coming by, and he didn't even, you know, slice the pie. He didn't check, you know, his corners at all. He came to the opening, and he had his pistol drawn. And it was really funny because I, like, I just reached up, racked it for him, and tapped him with my K-bar. And then he was like, ah, you know, he was screaming. It was great. I'm like, hi. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Just disabled your gun. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Go walk to the road. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I think I'd have yeah. to stop. I think I'd have to stop for the day. I don't think I can keep going. I would. <laughs> I hope. Wow. So, Michael, is this one of your um, sort of goals for BCMF is to train um, or educate and train some of the uh, younger folks or people who just don't have a lot of training in terms of military um, in your federation? Absolutely. Give me your young. Give me your old. You know, if if you if you want to develop a skill set or or broaden your horizons and and learn from the basics to the most advanced and and it's not we're not saying that our way is is the only way we're we we have open dialogue, um, but if you want to have a stronger foundation that's going to enrich your playing and, and enrich your 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 view on on the game. Definitely come down, check us out. Definitely. Yeah. And on your site, you do offer one on one trainings or group trainings, uh, I believe. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. True. Uh, and you, you're the one that's going to be conducting the training as well, or someone, someone else on your cadre list? Yes. Yes. So, so currently, um, Zero has limited availability because he's actually doing a heavy equipment course right now. Um, but right now, it's, it's mostly just me. Um, if other people take our course or I'm comfortable enough, I will open it up and I'm always looking for range masters, instructors, um, whether it's, you know, former, current law enforcement, military, I, I don't care. It's, it's about fostering this, this um, interchangeable relationship. And what's also interesting about a course is that we're very inexpensive because we're not looking 
at these courses as, as a way to, to earn an income. Everything goes back into the community. So it's course instruction, it's going back to the construction materials. Um, I try to donate at least 70 to 80% of our income from BCNF back to its members or to our veteran outreach. Um, for example, our course on, the, on April 10th, it's actually a free course. Um, usually our introduction night courses are about 15 bucks. Um, if you want a more in-depth from our other training modules, then it depends if you're a member or not. If you're a member, it's always half off. Um, and then we have actual course of fire instruction and then one-on-one training. Oh, this intro course is free. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. I advertised it as $30. Sorry. The, no, no, the $30 no, no. was your full oh. course. Oh, my oh, bad. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah. This whole time. We can't go back and edit it now. You still need to pay my... Yeah. Are, you, are you telling me you can't just do the 30-second clip that you put at the very beginning? He's like... Disregard this part of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, yeah. Mike. We all know where the money goes now, yeah. so there you go. Okay. It goes okay. back to the community. Yeah. 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 Well, so then, that, okay. Yeah, that's then, really, that, that's really good mm, to hear. Yeah, and then we have a lot of uh, um, online bookings as well. We have one-on-one range instruction. We have squad readiness. Uh, if people that are starting to build up what we call in the industry as roll-up for deployment, so essentially you can look at Crossfire as a deployment if you want to work on your team tactics. The certain aspects or training that you, that you want to learn before this, get in touch with us. We'll we'll work with you. Um, or if you just want something to read, you can't get down to Panther if you're not local. We offer our training manuals online, and it's a digital download. They're, they're really cheap. Um, also, if you have a safe place to conduct um, live fire for for your airsoft uh, imitation uh, toys, there. Um, we have, you know, downloadable content for targets as well. We have uh, U.S. Uh, targets, silhouettes, and then also for KD compliant, we have IPSEC action air targets as well. So you offer yeah. your wealth of knowledge through your cadres, um, sort of a standardization for people to go through. Yes. Um, yes. I, I believe we had a topic about this when it comes to airsoft. There's really no standardization when it comes to like you know formations movements mm -hmm. uh like cnc uh like, nope. <laughs> like everybody you know when 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 we were mentioning we were talking about radios this weekend we mentioned radios mm -hmm. it's just an open mic where everybody can just do whatever they want there, yeah. there is no way of communicating information one end to the other without screwing it up or you know without proper training right Absolutely. so i think this is what i i know it's cringed upon all the time when we say like you know airsoft training uh, you know, first of all, yes, airsoft is fun. You don't have to take it seriously. Second yeah. of all, when you're moving into big milsims or, you know, mm -hmm. you have a group that is looking to get standardized and trained together and you have no idea how to go through it other than watching videos online, mm -hmm. you know, seeing how people stack on CQB without prior knowledge of, you know, range or safety communication. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, safety, yeah. Yeah. The, the big one, like flagging people, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where, um, you know, Mac, Mac and Tack, we went through Jeff's course, right? Mm -hmm. How yep. he standardized everything and, you know, expensive, I agree, um, using JTF as the big selling point. I agree, it's a bit expensive, but, you know, it, he went through... For your average person, I would say so. But well, it also he, yeah, he was on, geared you know, towards... Yeah. The but law in, enforcement and military. Yeah, but like, in terms of standardization, he's got it down to a fine art because he's he's, yeah. he's trained this. Andy as well trains um, law enforcement as well. They have procedures in place. They have, you know, courses in place. They have itineraries in place to, to get people molded into, you know, what they want them to be at the very end. You know, and, you know, for, for Michael here, you know, you're doing the same thing with BCMF. You want standardization. You want, you know, a, a proper education and training for folks coming in here without proper training to begin right, with. Right, right. That's why we, we approach it in such a way that, uh, like, for example, you know, our bridge guide to airsoft, uh, Milsim infantrymen, or if you want to call it, you know, just a bridge guide to being airsoft infantry. Yeah. Um, in it, we go, you know, from, you know, what's the fire team ideology? How do you work in a group? Movement. Um, the coin phrase, you know, earning your shot, never shooting over friendlies, mm. shooting from cover, uh, gear and readiness, you know, how to do your, your optic setups. If you want to learn how to dial in your rifle range calculations, we will show you how to do this. 
the bread and butter that everyone's always interested in cqb <laughs> the difference now like what's the difference between cqb and cqc but also um dynamic entry to you what is dynamic entry guys uh loud bang and uh moving Battle music. really fast <laughs> <Battle> <laughs> music. yeah exactly right. <laughs> right. 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 because uh are, are, wait actually hold on are we talking like old school marines or are we talking new school marines because uh, is, it, is it bang bang then kick or is it kick then bang bang <laughs> Knock, it's... knock, democracy. That's what it, yeah. that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, did we knock first or are we just going in? Like, Well, my knock that I used to use was 30 millimeters. So, uh... <laughs> Hello. Why bother when you could just surprise them? <laughs> right. And that's, and that's another thing is that um, I go into a lot of philosophy and inside the training manual, I, I, I explain it. I break it down step by step why you do this and i i put so much personal experience into this training manual and give you the why and if you follow it from beginning to end i mm-hmm. think the average person just by reading i know reading has become you know a bad thing that we do yeah. and dull but there's no way you can properly i think film it mm-hmm. And apply it because it's very difficult. Um, we have in the past attempted that, mm. but YouTube always takes it down. That's the reason why we don't have a YouTube mm. channel anymore. Yeah, um, YouTube it's is too a much pain yeah. in the ass when it comes yeah. to kind of that stuff. Absolutely, but um, that's the reason why our our training manual exists. Is that um, you know there's pictures, mm. there's pictures, <laughs> <laughs> but it breaks it breaks it down, and you you you'll. I think you'll feel engaged and understand the science behind it. And then if you read that prior to, and then do our course, um, if you don't walk away enriched, there's, there's gotta be something wrong. Yeah. Right. You've, you've basically um, sort of not dumbed it down, but like boil it all down to airsoft infantrymen basics. Exactly. Because yeah, you, exactly. you don't, you don't need the rest of all the military mm. jargons into airsoft no. because sometimes no. it doesn't work because ranges right like yeah. your ranges are basically uh, you know at least 800 meters when it comes to engagement distances right. for us it's right. literally like 60 meters away yes well, <laughs> and, and that's actually Everything a good is point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a good point actually so um how is so how what did you have to modify with that because that's a thing that i run into anytime i'm playing with any of my friends who are currently in the military or you know people who just recently got out of the military and stuff like that um just the, the the range tactics when it comes to attacking and defending is like like you know we were just saying it's like what what are you determining as cqc or cqb versus um you know like typical en- engagement distances because um you can essentially shout at your enemy while you're uh, shooting at them in airsoft and uh if, you know if only you got that chance in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't really right, happen right. the other way. So um, d- uh, how hard was it to modify um, those kinds of uh, situations or that situation into your sort of uh, guide? Believe it or not, it's actually not difficult at all. So the difference that we definitely want to drive home and change in the lexicon is that CQC would be at Panther's city map. Mm-hmm. Okay. CQB close quarters battle is everything else in airsoft, right? Due to because, range. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when we start out on the range, no one likes a flat range. However, everyone likes metal targets because they hear that feedback. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. The reason why, like for example, we have paper targets is that paper does not lie. You fire from cover. You slice that pie around a barrier. You take you know, your target acquisition and you, you put a couple of rounds down range, it'll hit the paper. Two things happen. Either one, you're not on target. Right. Two, your hop up is messed up, but we can fix that. Mm-hmm. Or three, you don't have the necessary skill and the snappiness yet you're operating too fast. How it hits the paper is determined by course wind, distance, and skill. So before we even hit the range, if you have irons as well as an optic, we teach you all about co-witness. So co-witness, lower yeah. half, one third. So your irons 
is what your gun performs at your flat trajectory. Mm-hmm. So before you have that that increase in altitude from your BB, from um, I can't even think of the effect right now. Tag. Uh, Papa. Thank you. Oh. Right. So both the same thing, guys. Same thing. <laughs> one smart, one use Marine Corps crayons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the crayons came there. out, guys. <laughs> Good. I'm surprised I haven't even used the term break it down Barney style yet. <laughs> oh man. That was on its way. So yeah. so essentially your irons is your flat trajectory. You figure what that is in your gun. Mm-hmm. Then you take your optic. Your optic is dialed, you know, where crosshairs hit on paper every single time at your furthest engagement. And we teach you how to do this. Mm-hmm. I see people that have irons and optics, to be honest, looks cool, looks tactical but there is a place for it. And this is where um, um, myself and, and Dayton disagree is offset irons. Because once, once a rifle exits, it'll curve. So there's no reason why anyone should ever shoot their, their, their airsoft offset. Um, I have Wrong. offset. Wrong. <laughs> I actually use offset irons myself really and there's a reason for it Are, is your engagement this is close enough that it doesn't affect it when you can't it yes got yes. it that is, that is part of it also when you're in close quarters um we, we teach you how to engage low like a high compress so high compress yep. is when you're high port have it compressed and you can see so you don't have all those obstructions on top of your rifle so that's the reason why you have you have offsets but to use it out in the field if you're dialed in you know it goes back you know to the rifleman's creed you Mm -hmm. know this is my rifle that may like this one's mine if you know your rifle and your rifle knows you and knows your ability Mm -hmm. you can make it perform and i've i've even done it with a combat machine like Mm -hmm. like that's probably two three years old it's falling apart whatever as long as that barrel is straight and it's it's it's, it's true to my outer barrel, mm. you know I can I can do it, and that's the reason why I do that. Well, um, and as well mm. as not being like the majority of the people who are always constantly chasing like some some goal of uh, always hit shooting super super ridiculously far. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, oh, yeah. like it, it, if you tune your like that's why like I I have my gun set to two eights. And only do I switch to threes and lose the lose the FPS that mm-hmm. I'm wanting because I want the I actually want the, the faster shot with the uh, lower weight. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it, it, you know it's it's like once you have your gun all tuned to that, then you can do all those fancy things like you know offsetting your gun because right. then you know that it's going to be consistent because consistent like it, it, this is something that I always find that people get so confused all the time in airsoft is that airsoft accuracy comes from consistency mm-hmm. because uh, unfortunately our guns don't just shoot straight mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. and, and you got to do stuff to it. Yeah, you know where where you, where you just Very adjust just. your zero, and yeah. then now you you know all that. So it's just like uh, so once you fix the uh, consistency, then you can get all your you know accuracy right. and do all those cool things. So yeah, no, exactly. it's it's a, it's a good point that you do make. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do the same thing with my uh, with my gas bow back. Everything mm. has a. I have a certain range that I fire yeah. at, which is usually exactly. twenty five meters. Mm. And then from there, I just adjust, you know, close and far. Mm. I usually don't mess around with the hop up. Um, I'll keep it at that range so that I know that I just have to move up mm. a little bit mm-hmm. just exactly. to get just to get to that engagement distance because I know gas is not going to go far. So mm. I keep mine at two fives. You'd be surprised, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but I keep mine at two fives and just push up. That's really all I like to do is, you know, just. I could I could keep that weapon canted too. I know that at that range it's not gonna like change its variation or anything. I know how far it shoots. And it's just the amount of training I put in it, like knowing where my shots are gonna land and um what position I have the uh, weapon at as well. Mm. I sometimes especially with my M4, uh I just precisely know how it's gonna land that I don't even look down the iron sometimes. 
and I will get center mass right away, just like pulling it up, bang, bang, and it's it's still canted at that point. And then mm-hmm. I'll come in and actually like look down to iron sights to you know to get that headshot or something. It's or just having that sight picture just memorized from muscle yeah, memory, I, it's mu- like... all mu- muscle memory for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I've used that weapon for the last I don't even know eight years now. That's how long I've had it now. And... See, I su- I suffer from visual memory. Uh, I-, I keep going until I see that hand up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like not even like we, I don't we, even care how we got we got we gotta change we gotta change that silhouette with the hand uh, up afterwards. Oh well, because well, because well, just because like you know when you start getting fancy like that right like uh, you start running into the realm of people like not understanding or believing like I've I've run into that before too like there were a couple times where there were a couple people who had really 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 tuned like platforms for themselves so they knew what they were capable of doing and I'd be getting shot around a corner literally not knowing how, where it came from and sitting there wondering if it was a ricochet so i've i've run into that so you know it's just like uh just uh keep shooting to their hands up mm-hmm. and further to that training which uh, airsoft uh, infantrymen uh, like the basic um do you go just continuously like drill them into Doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, a part of part of it is drill and and how it applies, but it's always that connection and why we do this. Corrective posture, explain yeah. the physics, ex- explain the angles, and just really drill that home. Um, and hopefully, they take it away there, and then they continue that pattern. Right, exactly. Because that's the hardest part is once you learn it, they'll be like, okay, cool. It, it, it stop it, like some for some it stops there and they don't continue on mm-hmm. and they do the same mistake over and over again um and then for some they absorb it like a sponge and then they continue on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it Absolutely. until it becomes muscle memory yeah um i'm guessing with with this sort of like range that you're doing do you offer further courses like as a fire team together and working yes. together yes so so it's the introduction tactics, course right? yeah. yes so the introduction course covers the basics in every single of these sections okay and our continuing modules is like if you guys just want to book a squad movements and tactics mm. for three hours straight i will teach you and instruct you every aspect movement um, how to move as a squad, even without calls. So it's all, you know, visual. Silent. Um, it's, it's all silent. And by the end, you guys should be doing um, corner feeds, central feeds, uh, perimeter control, defense, all of that silently. Mm. You know? Yeah. And that's something, if you, especially if you're a big team, that's something that's needed. That's I mean, useful. I yeah. know um, with our group, like JTF, uh, like our JTF group, which is like Marauders, um, Aces and Eights, and Aces, the other yep. group, they, they, they train together on their own. So they have their own thing already. Um, I understand that, you know, they, they do it for Airsoft. Mm-hmm. It's not a standardized training that is... Now, they've taken from militaries, but they just, you know, what they, they dumbed it down to what's important in airsoft and they'll go train with it. You're mm-hmm. taking your experience from the military and basically applying it to airsoft and you're teaching it to the rest of the folks. I yeah. think this is what is needed, especially for big milsim. Mm-hmm. Um, because in, I know in our milsim, we don't have a cadre system like milsim West does, where they have yeah. military experts leading the command and control, leading the platoon command, you know, and, and then the exos as well, um, your second in commands. And as well as uh, sometimes you get squad leaders that are military trained. There's not a lot of us out here, you know, that have military training and we just go into a sim. And you know, this is why we have sort of not a tier one, but like a tier two level where it's like we have a break in between to make mm-hmm. sure that everybody it so to make sure that, that 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 everyone's alive, everybody's, you know, in good health and everybody is having fun. Right. That we you know, we can't get to that tier one level where it's like the, you leave it up to the teams to command, you know, to follow a chain of command and to follow orders. Right, right, right. It's it's a it's a total different ball field when it comes. People, I think people we're break too easily. Yeah, we're 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 still way behind on that, right? But at least we're trying with Crossfire too, right? We we have, you know, we have BCMF offering that type of training, mm-hmm. so that you guys are well prepared into going into a sim like this. 
Yeah. Right. I, I, for me personally, right? Like for anyone, uh, well, for, for all of, of you guys listening, I would definitely take up on this to sort of get the basic understanding of what you're looking for or what to look for when you're at these kinds of events. Like that's what I think a lot of people seem to miss out or seem to miss sort of misframe when they get it, go to a Milsom and whatnot. And you obviously one are spending a lot of money, right? So you want to put it into perspective for yourself so that you can get the most uh, out of that money, right? And that's why we always tell people that you're also going to have to be prepared for um, shitty scenarios, right? But you got to sometimes, you know, use that term, embrace the suck and just deal with it because, hey, you also paid not only for the good experiences, but also the bad. And, uh, you know, being able to go through some of these courses like that, you can kind of get a like uh, exposure to it, right? So that yeah. uh, you understand what you may or may not go through before you are there in the actual event, soaking wet and um, wanting to go home. Yeah. And, and I think really just like understanding like what small unit tactics are, how to utilize them with like, cause like it, it really is essentially just like it, like, you know, you already are running out there with your friends. You're out there with your group, with your team, like whoever you care for in your immediate little tribe so small unit tactic could be so effective for that situation and just being able to play part of a bigger team as well right so like i think honestly just the like you know breaking down the bare fundamentals that that mike is offering in the in the your i think your introductory course and everything like that and then um into the more uh broader scoped uh or sorry not the, the more refined scoped of like what lessons is and then my question to lead into what i'm saying here is mike are we going to see some kind of like uh some kind of field craft uh survival kind of like, you know <laughs> like like what uh like you know like um because i know you do have a lot of knowledge in that aspect too so for the kids that and the people who are interested because it's not just kids like myself as well like i'm gonna pick your brain you already know i do um when it comes to the mills aspect of it, you know, like sustainment is uh, one of those things that is, you know, key overlooked. And, uh, you know, like, have you thought about giving your information on that and or, uh, you know, training on that situation and stuff? To be honest, um, this Milsim came quite early for mm -hmm. me because mm -hmm. uh, my intention was to carve out um, radio transmission SOP. I wanted to do field craft sustainments. I wanted to do so you do have this stuff are. in the works and planned for you. I, I, have, I, I, understand. I have I have everything in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> and and almost, almost daily people are contacting me, whether it's why is my grouping like this on my gun? Why am I like this? Look at this photo. Why am I this? Hey, what should I pack? How am I to see myself? And everything goes down to water. Mm. Get yourself a jet boil with <laughs> yes, yep. one of the best things Tack and I yep. invested in. Yeah, yep. um, socks and take some Motrin. <laughs> Motrin, yeah, no, take yeah. a knee. No. No. Yes. <laughs> oh um, my gosh, the Motrin. Yes. Yeah. yeah that morning after Ranger waking up, sleeping on the ground. <sighs> yeah, Ranger candy. Um, but um, no, in all in all seriousness, um, yeah, I have a lot of field craft I want to do. Actually, believe it or not. Uh, I've been really itching before I move forward with that project. I really want to see what Merlin has on offer because I know he and Omega Ops, you know, on their website was offering a course, but they're not doing it. And I don't think they. I don't think it ever have... uh, passed or uh, formulated. I've asked them multiple no. times in regards to no. it because I want, actually wanted to help them with it as well. I but... know exactly. And I, yeah. I would love to help promote them and apply you know my prior service my experience and, and drive home to them and that's what that's another thing about bcmf is that we're not trying to be the new hot thing on the market we're not trying to do that at the same time every step every event that we do we're trying to promote someone as well we're mm -hmm. trying to lift up and enrich the community so um we have a couple of things in the works that we want to deal with them um, there's some IPSC action air stuff that uh, we have in the works planning with Julian from ASG that we're going to have exclusively at Panther. Yeah, I'm really um, excited for that stuff. That's going to be sweet. 
Yeah. Uh, and there's other things that uh, I want to offer also Mac and Tactical TM <laughs> as, as well. Um, so yeah, it's just about enriching the, the community. But yeah, I definitely have a lot of things in, in the works. It's just finding time, you know, family man, professional, running this on the side. Um, when it comes to the planning and, and the application, it's, I don't have the resources I once had um, mm. before Bill C-21 and even before Bill 4. Bill 4 took a lot out of us as an organization. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah we, we were so depleted and i myself um was just like, completely exhausted from it oh don't get me started and, and from a media standpoint too we were exhausted as well yeah trying really to get, get trying to get the the news straight trying to get everybody lined up and trying to get everybody informed well and just the whole some of the factors that came into it too right like how it affects people in certain ways and stuff like that and as but, but you know and there were positives that came with it too i you know i at least i'd like to say you know other people who do law or practice law may have their difference of opinion but hey that's what it is a difference of opinion prove it in court bitch <laughs> yeah that's your job lawyer yeah, yeah so okay so you, you have a lot of training lined up then i think um just I, I remember uh, sitting down with you and talking about the types of training that airsofters need because I've worked with airsofters for like the past 10 years and it's always been lacking when it comes to just standardization and training. I think you're, you're Michael, you're in the right footstep when it comes to teaching these things, yeah. especially with your background. It really helps. Um, I'm going to be honest. We've had many events where just like command and control just didn't know what to do or it was just mm-hmm. in disarray because information gets passed from one end and then goes Te- out telephone. the toilet the other way for some reason, but it doesn't go straight right. to the commander or mm-hmm. like things like I was. T- I remember I was talking to you about prisoner handling, <laughs> the five S's when I was mentioning that how I learned it prior, yeah, but not a lot of people know about it, so it ends up being a messy situation <laughs> when it comes to like airsoft like prisoner detail, right? If if ever if People know what the five S's are, you know, look it up. Um, uh, security, 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 uh, more security. Right? Uh, <laughs> silence is the first right. one. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. No talking, no Russian. <laughs> <laughs> but um, either way, um, yeah, like, like, like we mentioned before, it's just like, it's just lacking sometimes. And there's, you know, there's a reason why the military does really well when it comes to these things is because they've they've had the proper training for it they've had the proper discipline for it and they've had the continuous training over and over again and improvements over and over again and you know and for us airsofters it's just fun game of go out there shoot them up and that's it and pack it up for the rest of the day right yeah yeah, yeah it's every 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 30 minutes yeah. oh, I, I understand that i understand that that's the way to go when it comes to a panther but when it comes to the bigger events you know there's a lot more organization a lot more discipline and a lot, there's more, a lot more depth yeah 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 to it it's it's the reason it's called mil sim military simulation mm-hmm. it should mm-hmm. act like one it should suck Oh, wait, wait, no, it I mean, suck. Oh, awesome, awesome, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Embrace sorry. the suck. Yeah. It's called overwhelming firepower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I guess my question for you, Michael, is as far as, like, I don't know if you've attended any Milsims or any big events or anything, do you find that, you know, my statement is the same thing, is it just lacks that kind of training, that depth, that that focus, that discipline? Abs- absolutely. Um a lot of it comes down to experience and how to apply it. Like, for example, um, I'm also in the process of writing a bunch of training mini Milsims mm. because I, I hope that by people taking these courses and, and even if they just read our literature, they'll understand what they're in for. They'll get the basics, they'll get the understanding, and then they can start doing the mini Milsims. The goal is to have our, our promotion companies that, are, that we're aligned with do these mini Milsims local at local fields get everyone together so that there should be no reason why we can't get you know six seven hundred people to crossfire there's no there's no reason why we can't there's enough interest the thing is people haven't taken that step yet and i think by offering courses that we do it puts everyone on a standard it gets everyone up to speed and then we can turn around and let it filter through the community other teams and then our courses are also designed that if someone wants to purchase our modules, 
they can then take that. And if their team lead can then reiterate to their squad these things and follow this training curriculum, there's no reason why anyone else can't do it. And I agree with that statement too, because if you even just get one person from your team, just come to the course, you know, or go full and train and, you know, you plant the seed on that person's head and then they go out to their team and be like, okay, this is what we need to do because it works. This is what we need to do because, you know, it, you know, I I took the training for it and it actually works really well. You know, what we're doing before, not a good idea. This is Mm -hmm. how we're going to do it now. Right. And that basically takes it to the next level when it comes to being a team together because you're supposed to work together. Yeah, well, that's that's a straight give a man a fish slash teach a man to fish. Yeah, yes. yeah, and uh, yeah, there's a huge difference in that, and as well as a community. It, I understand this will take some time. This is just one of those work that is like almost like a passion project for you. Michael. You got to foster it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I got, mean, you have to be there every step of the way. Yeah, when yeah. I when I ran my team like probably six years ago when I was a full time team leader. Um, like squad leader and owner. Um, literally, I had. Uh, I know I shared it to you, Michael. I didn't. I was kind of embarrassed to share it with you because you had more military experience. But you know, I dumbed it. I dumbed it down to the most basic and airsoft when it comes to like um, working as a fire team together, and mm-hmm. you know, and then afterwards a squad. No, because no, you need the standardization good. for everything, and this right. is you know coming from a teaching background. This is what you need to sort of teach people the ways. Standardize all your movements. Standardize. All your, you know, your lingos, your movements, your, um, your operations, and it becomes just stuck in your head. Everybody moves the same way. Everybody talks the same way. Everybody knows what you're doing, you know, and yeah, it's just, just one of those things where it's just lacking in airsoft. I, you know, it's, I've, I've given my manual out before from previous Milsim events. You know, some people have read it. It's awesome. You know, some people have utilized it. It's awesome. But having... Every, especially if you have an entire platoon, right, of like 40 people or 48 people or whatever, if they all operate the same way, then, you know, it's... Michael, just just please promise me that your first ad is going to be something like, are you Milsom ready? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to join. <laughs> I want you. Yeah. Would you like to know more? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, my God. Exactly. Oh my God. I'm at your disposal, Michael, if you ever need to do that. No, that's true. That's true. That's true. Service <laughs> actually, guarantees citizenship. Uh, yeah, right. Actually, serve. I would like either one of you two boys to be in this course, to be honest. I'm going to run through your course on the, uh, what is it, the, the 10th we have it? The tenth, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, be I, there. I'll, I'll be jump there. in. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a sponge. I, I love learning, okay. and it's just yeah. one of those things that no. I'll absorb it and I'll take it away, and I'll, I'll probably apply it to all the things that I've, mm-hmm. I'm doing already. I want you to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Hoorah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh boy, he's, he's, like, yeah, it's a lot. He's watched me play before. <laughs> yeah, guys. For anyone who's wondering, I always tell people they're like, "Mac, you're good." I'm like, "No, I actually." <laughs> No, no. You get it running. No, you, every, everyone, everyone has the basics. You. That's that's another thing too about uh, trying to find standardizations that everyone finds their favorite influencer um, on social media, and that's what they follow. And some of that bleeds over, and then you have everyone doing this way. Next thing you know, it everyone's wearing flannel and trucker hats. And <laughs> going I wonder where that came hips. from. <laughs> oh, but um, I'm following the Japanese guy. Okay, you see that. But you he's following that? the other guy. Yeah. Wait a second. I, yeah, wait, a, wait, a, wait a second. Wait a second. Where's that hat? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I can definitely see that. Yeah. I, I wanted to jump into this one. I know um, BCMF is also a uh, marksmanship uh, federation as well, but uh, competitions. Yes. Um, are you hosting any shooting competitions? I know you said you were working with Julian in terms of shooting competitions. Yeah, but, yeah, um... yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna try to s- set up some things. Um, there's a couple plans that are going on um, this spring and summer regarding his his area. Yeah. But the other aspect about our training courses is that every time BCMF has an event or training course, we always get dialed in on the range you run the range, you do a course of fire. So every time you're at one of our events, you're actually running a course of fire. It gets you warmed up, it gets you engaged. And then after you understand the, the flow through and how to execute it, you then run a timed COF. So every time you're at one of our events, you're running a timed course. You're running, whether it's our level one, level two, level three, all the way up, all the different variations. That way it gets more people um, tuned in, 
and it gets them a chance to look at their skill and how they're hitting, how their gun is performing. And then when we go into the actual training module, whether or not it's pertaining to that aspect of, of the range, but we do try to set up a range to be akin to the module that we're running. And we make sure we do that with every single course. Um, I have mapping software for course of fire. I think I have, I don't know, maybe a hundred, hundred and something different courses I've designed over the years. Um, I had to actually dig up some old uh, graph paper ones I did in, in the service. I had uh, my mom take a picture of a bunch of my stuff and, and send it over to me uh, just so I can have references. I'm like, ah, oh. oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, a big, huge shout out to Thrasher, Tom. Um, he's actually assisting me. Um, we're building some new um, behind cover barriers so we can do our drills from. So we're going to be donating that to the field. Um, I've already, you've called made... up all your carpenters. I see. Oh, da, yeah. Tom, you're the man. Thanks. Tom. <laughs> uh, um, I also, uh, one of the, one of my, my cadre, Ben, um, we made just, uh, five new target stands that we threw together. So we're going to be using, you know, our paper targets for our courses. So we're donating those five target stands to the field as well. And, um, uh, we'll probably be doing a lot more as well. Okay. And um, I've heard you're in the process of receiving your provincial recognition as the National Sporting Organization, NSO. I oh, know yeah. when we were talking about um, C21, you mentioned this a while back um, in terms of like recognizing Airsoft as a sporting organization. How's that going? Because I, I think it, it, it's a hard sell. sort of sell for the National Sporting Organization. To well, you have, do, you, do you have, have you read over the speed QB, like standardizations? Like, do you see why they were able to do it? And for us, it's it, it, or when it comes to skirmish, it's hard. Well, not exactly. There's, there's wording in there that you can change it to where Airsoft being a national sporting organization, and these are the umbrellas. This is the prescribedness. See, the interesting thing about gun law in Canada is that certain aspects of it, if it's deemed a prescribed sport, mm. for example, let's just say Bill C-21 came, everything is, is shut down. But IPSEC can still run because why? Recognized it's a prescribed sport. Cadets can actually still run their air rifles because why? The events that they do, Prescribed sport. Same thing with Action Air. What we have to do is we have to take Action Air, and this is where IPSEC has been lacking because technically we're the only representatives for uh, that are active for Action Air down here in the Lower Mainland um, because no one wants to run the events. Everyone thinks you know Airsoft is is, is lacking numbers, but when push came to shove, who came out and helped us battle this bill, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, so what we tried to do is we want to set up more nonprofits in every province that just essentially will allow retailers to like, here's a letter of intent. You go to a store, you buy your airsoft, you know, uh, imitation firearm. Here's a letter of declaration. You promise you won't be using it in the commission of this commission of that, you know, you're not going to be, have bad behavior. And then you have proof that you're going to be a good person in the industry. And you take that. And that means if everyone's on the same board, there shouldn't be a problem. There should be no legal authentic, you know, technical issues. And then you can then categorize the different aspects of Airsoft. And it's, you know, drop and play, Nielsen, skirmish, um, speed, CQB. We have rule sets and we already have standardization in each aspect. It's just that no one really has put it in the confines and, and on paper, like action air has their own rule set depending yep. on how it's powered. Mm, um, yeah, we run exactly. our course of fire. Like for example, I told no one, no HPA this time around because I want to see how well everyone performs for us. My, my concern is also realism and training. I, I haven't operated personally HPA long enough um, to get akin to it. And there's certain drills and there's certain performance that I don't want someone ripping their hose out of it. I mean, and True. there's, there's, there's a lot of movement, there's up, down exercises, you know, you may have to be required to low crawl and, you know, transitions and there's a lot of corners, objectives. When you have a hose to me, I don't want to risk someone breaking their platform on my course, you know, and it's not a cheap platform. What goes into that and everything else, you know, what have you. 
<clears throat> so for for a national sporting organization, once we get enough people and members, and also throughout Canada, mm. we can file. We can bring people in. We can protect the sport finally and fully. And I would like to see a new iteration of Bill Four because we want to combat some wording that's in there. Um, they took some suggestions, but then. Um, to, uh, to be on, honestly, you know, Mark Farnworth, if you're listening, you know, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General, I'm giving you the finger. Um, but anyway, he lives because, close by me, so <laughs> because there's there's certain things that that we lobbied and told him about. I mean, we, we got the 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 softer language in there. It's no more called a replica because replica has a bad, yep. you know, with a bad taste in your mouth. So the whole aspect of imitation imitation firearm should be the standard so there's a lot of wording a lot of legality that we want to see spread throughout canada we want to make sure that we're still protected and we can still use various things at milson and unfortunately bill four kind of yeah vehicles is oh, yeah. one and, of them and yeah. it's it's really you know stressed out uh omega ops and i was consulting with with those guys trying to get them legal answers but no one wants to touch it no one wants to be the one to set the precedent yeah 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 and and the fact i don't blame them though because it's a hard path and 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 the fact that you're choosing to do it is i I commend you all the way because um you know you you yeah you're you're doing you're doing god's work it's not (laughs) easy (laughs) no and that's that's another thing um unfortunately uh zero couldn't be with me tonight but uh that's like one of the things that he wanted to uh to throw out there is that as a fun sport, as something that's so inclusive, we know we're tearing down, you know, gender, we're tearing down race, we're tearing, we're tearing down, you know, um, this social divide. I mean, like, I, I, I still talk with airsofters in Russia, Israel, Ukraine, South America, Europe, United States. And how come here in Canada, why does it still feel like we're playing in the basement? Why are we still mm. hiding? Why, where is that? Why does it feel like we're in the basement? I yeah, like yeah, that. that makes it, yeah, yeah. So it's true. Really you know, good, and, really and, good point there. And the one thing that, that he also drove oh, in is like, boy. Why, why don't we have <laughs> more team integrity? So it's not just follow the rules on the field and represent the sport. Where is that off the field? there's the support and that's you know like for example you know even even i feel like we're lacking in bcmf because i haven't had all my guys together and play some some dropping games together but in spirit we're still there but you know we have you know our our veterans that that we communicate with and 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 help push along and like i i i've been donating still up here and still in, in my own country but where is that integrity and where is that structure and how can we all band together, not just from Bill C-21, not just from the lobby of Bill Floor. When are we going to get out of mom's basement, Mm -hmm. step forward, and really organize to bring this across, you know, from east to west? And, you know, I thought this was, you know, the the great, you know, the great white north. This was, this is, you know, the best place to be. I mean, like, I tell everyone when I came to this country, like, why are you in Canada? And I'm like, I can live the American dream more in Canada than anywhere else. Except airsoft and firearms. <laughs> yeah, that's Everything the downside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, that's one thing that he definitely wanted to 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 drive home and, and mm-hmm. mention. Uh, and talking about standardization and, and broadening uh, various organizations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, that's that's also a nice uh, little segue there because uh, next week we're going to be doing an Australia segment where we're going to talk about how it's like to be under. Uh, a, a huge ban, but you're huge. still able to sneak in there and play, and how it's like for them to do it. So we'll we'll check that out, like next week. But yeah, no, I I agree with that statement. It's like yeah, we since C21 came out, it basically banded all of us together from east to west, mm-hmm. and you know, like for us, that's the reason we started the show is because there was a huge disconnect, disarray from just the east alone because you know center of the universe over there i mean the same same with our politics how it works um they get more of the say than we do here and you know we have a huge airsoft community here it's just we we always get overshadowed by the east coast and the east coast and central yeah Yeah, we're just not connected by by land like there's just a huge divide a prairie right 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for us, you know, we're not willing to drive over there just to play a Maelstrom game. But, you know, that's the advertisement we see all the time. Unfortunately, when I was at the two twenty one meetings, it's always been like that as well. It felt like that, like that, um, like that when we were in those meetings. Um, I think, Michael, you're, you're in some of those as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always been a huge disconnect. And, oh, yeah. yeah. I was usually the one yelling. Yeah. No, <laughs> thank God you were there because I, I don't yell. I just absorb and, yeah, yeah make sure, you know, we you gotta like. Motivate. We, yeah. You gotta motivate. Yeah. It's just, yeah, that's why we started the show. And, you know, and, yeah, that's, 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 that's where we're at now. And now we're interviewing as well. Basically, yeah. yeah. Full circle. <laughs> Full circle. Wow. Um, so it's, it's impressive that BCMF has done a lot of this, um, all, you know, without being noticed and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we try and give you as much credit as possible, as much notice as possible, especially with your course coming up. It's, it's great. Um, I have one last question for you, um, in terms of competitions, when it comes to shooting competitions and like the training that you offer, um, where do you focus the most in BCMF? Is it more in the competition side or is it more in the training um, aspect, like the, the, the small team tactics? You know, where, where, where should people start? The shooting part or <clears throat> focusing on their soft skills we, with teams? I, I have to say it comes down primarily airsoft and, and paintball. It's a team sport, but you have to have the fundamentals and you have to have the breakdown for the individual first and foremost. That's the reason why we start off on the range. That's a primary focus because you have a metric to test yourself. Know your rat, no judgment, put the ego aside, step forward, put your feet on those yellow footprints, and then we can build you up you know, and know what you're possible of doing and then take you beyond that. And then you can train with your squad because if you just start with the squad, you're going to pick up each other's bad habits. Yeah. And and that, and that happens a lot. And and that's the reason why, like when I was in the military, we, they move us around so much. That's also the reason why we, we only have a commandant, you know, you know, for, for a short term, because you don't want to get complacent. Yep. You need that change. You need People that do change. things differently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why you move around so much. You got to be uncomfortable to learn. Right. Exactly. And then, yeah, there's, there's... unfortunately, right? <laughs> what better way to learn than under I feel like the most change comes at, yeah, discomfort. Yeah, exactly. 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 And that's why you. Once you step off that bus and you recruit training, you get that shark attack. You get that shock and awe because that's what shocks your senses. And then from that impulse, yeah, I have knife hands, buddy, and I still use it. At- I want to. I want to see those knife hands on a weekend. I want to see. Those <laughs> I, was gonna, the I can see <laughs> your wife telling you not to talk to your kids with the knife hands. Like you put those knife hands away. <laughs> well, just today he he stood up and then his knife hand came out. Oh, he, he turned it. He turned it uh, um, 45 degrees outward, and then he asked, why? And I'm like, <laughs> at four. I'm like, all right. Ooh, He's right. already a ma- Marine starting at that age. Yeah, all right. right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Little, He's making his daddy little. proud. Oh, yeah. Don't that's send him to the bus yet. <laughs> <laughs> get that, no, get that yeah, phone yeah. call. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm I'm dreading it. He starts kindergarten in, in September, so I'm definitely putting him on that bus. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, oh well, enjoy the time, man. Because uh, five, mm. holy crap, my time's gonna fly. It's cr- mm. yeah, it's crazy. Like I didn't even have him when I first started coming to Panther. I just couldn't believe it. Like wow. Oh yeah, that was. A- mm. Um, any any last questions for you guys before we move on to the uh, the future part here? Um, I guess, um, uh, one question, um, that I have is, is that, um, how, what are your expectations on expansion in the, um, coming, uh, I guess year or, uh, next two years? I don't want to throw it so far as a big net, just because a lot of things are changing in the, uh, background as well as uh, things, you know, happening in our daily lives in the sense of like, uh, the COVID, um, right. so, uh yeah what are your what what are your sort of uh predictions slash expectations for the next two years 
so for the next two years, our, our two-year plan is to take all of our trading modules, get them out of my head, and, 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 and write them down from the page. Yeah, no, down. Yeah, I, yeah. I even have a bunch, a bunch on paper. I want to transition them into digital media. Mm-hmm. I, I want to set that complete standard that if people, you know, want to do this um, and take it seriously, here are the tools. And then I want other like-minded individuals across Canada, across different provinces and teams that if, if you adopt this method, number one, super cheap. Two, the training's there. Three, it's proven because right. I'm here and not to toot my own horn, but well over 300 combat engagements. Holy fuck. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. You know, and, and if you, because uh, I know Poi's got a copy of my DB14, but, um, you know, we, 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 we've, we've been to Fallujah. Um, a lot of us, you know, went through all that, came out unscathed. Not saying that, you know, we're better than the ones that didn't, but after a certain set level of time and being in so many conflicts, you, you adapt and you survive and they call you a gunfighter for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, and you have that, you know, that, that instinct. And I'm just thankful that one, I'm still here Two, to pass this knowledge along and to allow others to have this experience without having to do what we did, I think is more rewarding because it's a game yeah. We want to feel enriched. That's the reason why I play video games. That's the reason why some of us mm-hmm. read or watch movies and we want to do these same things and experience these things, but we don't necessarily want to step on those little footprints. I'm not saying you need to, because after being in the amount of conflicts that we've been in and, and completed as such, I don't wish it on anyone. Do mm-hmm. I want my own little boy to, to, to go off? Yes and no, mostly mm-hmm. no. Um, but if you just want to enjoy the, the, the game aspect of it, by all means, you know, but, but for the people that don't want to take airsoft seriously and want to make it um, more lively, um, my hat goes off to them as well, because there's, there's times when I don't take the game seriously and, and at all. And everyone thinks, oh, man, this guy, military, serious, serious, serious military doctrine. We have a lot of fun out there. We do a lot of mm. dumb stuff. Um, just like being in the military, the military, but um, I love it. And I just want to be able to offer the service to everyone, no matter what your goal is. If you just want to learn how to do something basic and better, mm-hmm. we're, we're here. We're here. Okay. That's, that's a good way of putting it down. I think for, for me, when it comes to um, like taking a course, if, if, you know, cause I, I'd like to take the course, you know, I want to take the course. The reason I want to do it personally is because I want to learn the standardizations of how to run a, you know, a squad organization or like a platoon organization. And as well as pass that down to, you know, whoever's down below me, Mm -hmm. right? Knowledge gained and then knowledge shared. Because if you're having standard, um, like SOPs for everybody, and they understand what the SOP is. There's no need to explain on how to do things. They understand how to do things. And then from there, you know, the other person will carry on and, and pass that on to whoever else that needs to be passed on to. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, as far as uh, Mac, do you have anything else to add? Mm, okay well so i i have like a superficial question for you mike just because um you know i know you've always been serious about the training and this is why we brought you on and when it comes to the game aspect of airsoft you mm-hmm. know um what is it that you most enjoy because i have seen you run you know different styles of platforms and everything like that and you know i have ran out or uh, run into you on the field a couple times you know mm-hmm. either on my team or against mm-hmm. me as well you know and there's, there's always great times um so is there a prefer play method like do you like playing like your old style like you like just 
getting up in there or are you more laid back nowadays, you know, and not to comment, but just, you know, as your age, obviously, and then, you know, like <laughs> your service history, obviously, um, you know, can affect your physicality and stuff, but um, mm. do you find it limiting or do you know, like how, how do you find you fit on the field nowadays? It depends on whether it's raining or not and what side of the bed I woke up on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, yeah, that's perfect answer right there. Yeah, um, that, that dictates, you know, my day going. That's the reason why, I, you know, having two platforms or multiple uppers for my platform for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started going to the Panther, I, I hung back because one, I didn't know the field. I didn't know you know, your guys' particular rule set. By the third or fourth time I was out there, I was trying to do, either do, you know, recce, you know, I was out there deep in the bush. And then I realized, oh, this is your spawn? Oh, that's why there's so many of you here. Okay, I'll leave you guys along now, alone. And then- <laughs> Oh, then man. Get right behind them. You're, you're, like, you're wow. the reason we got called out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and it's really funny because like, I remember one time, even with my armband, I walked up and then like, uh, I remember, you know, three individuals and they're actually, you know, regulars and they're standing there talking and I'm just like, how's it going? And then they're looking at me and whatever. And it's like, your armbands. And I'm like, yeah. And then out comes the M9 and pop, pop, pop. But um, <laughs> now I, I started, you know, really watching at distance because I like to see where everyone's flow is, how they're playing. Are they just, you know, the game dynamic, the game dynamic and, and how are they just like throwing more people at this single narrow hallway? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? You know, I know what I've ever heard of flanking. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where's the distract? Where's the flanking? You know, and then you have the one guy who's, you know, shooting hot or whatever. So, <laughs> funny story there. Anyway, no, like, um, yeah. so, so you have that going on. And then I'm like, I noticed a lot of people are, are, are doing not necessarily dumb shit mm -hmm. you know, excuse the language but there are instances where they're putting other players at risk like yeah. someone's running across and it's your own teammate you're post up on a tree you're not even looking even though he is in your your, your plain view and you're shooting across him right you know or one guy is crouched down and then you tap him he's like behind you left side so he knew you know that you're coming on the other side of the tree and then all of a sudden that guy takes a step back for some reason instead of staying where he's told him he's gonna stay and the other guy crosses right in front of him next thing you know you're both standing in the same little spot and popping each other off i'm just like what in the world so that's when i realized that's where we need the standardization we, we need to to really open our eyes and everyone's like oh it's just plastic bbs and i'm like it could still hurt yeah yeah no that that's where the line always seems to get like drawn from most people is that oh because it's not boo bullets it's it's uh, it doesn't no. need to be serious it's no, not bullets yeah yeah <laughs> No need well, for muzzle well, awareness. Well, I, I'm just saying, right? Because this comes down to the because I, I I was talking to Mac about it before because I got into an argument with a guy that uh, that I played some video games with, um, who was kind of like uh, crapping on the factor about airsoft, right? And I and I totally get it, right? But uh, there's it's a lot just, of cringe. I get it. it. it there's there's a lot of cringe, and it, and it it, it sucks because the conversation point got so heated and escalated to the point where it's all like. Um, uh you 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 don't know what it's like to get shot at blah 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 blah. you only think you know what it's like to get shot and it's all like okay let's go let's go S some munitions that's the closest we can get without us actually mm -hmm. dying right let's go i'm, I'm down yeah. I'll, I'll take the hit it's gonna suck but bang 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 right like that mm -hmm. what, like it's like it, it got to the point where it's like are you just like you know getting like uh you, you, like because like uh it doesn't need to get to that point, right? Like right. Th that kind of argumenting, because it's just like at the end of the day, we treat it as a game, and right. that's and we and we reset and we go from there. But do we like all the cool aspects of like, you know, a sexy tactical mag flip or mm. like a really clean mag transition? You know, like mm. of, of course, of course, like yeah. who wouldn't praise stuff like that? So mm. yeah, no, it was just really interesting and well, like. What is your perspective on that when it kind of like when you have to deal with people who can't see the other side sort of because I guess they're like hooked on whatever, you know, thing that they're hooked on. 
Um, I I don't let it bother me because yeah. the entire time it doesn't affect me directly at all. And if that's what they're looking at the sport, or if they just want to, you know, have that behavior, it's kind of a negative behavior. But as long as they're not infringing on someone else's enjoyment, mm-hmm. let them have it. But the second that they do, it's like, hey, you know, lock it up. You know, just don't have that you know, behavior and don't let that bleed over. And that's, and that's yeah. one aspect that I think has happened here in Airsoft is that everyone's posting, you know, um, you know, call your hit videos or hmm. overshooting videos or toxicity, you know, and, and all those negative behaviors. And we don't, we don't need that because it's, it's going to bring down the sport, but it's clickbait. And, and if you need it for that video, whatever, or if you feel like you, you need to vent, um, do it it doesn't affect me either, either way but as soon as you start having a lot of viewable content it's a possibility that you, as an ambassador like mm-hmm. everyone's an ambassador to the sport really uh, yeah second it, it, you talk about it and it has to be a positive yeah representation exactly whether you like it or not once you get into it and you're in the public eye you are representing a bigger mm-hmm. you know thing than just yourself and if you exactly. only want to represent yourself well then <laughs> Yeah, it's been airsoft for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if and if you are that way mentality, you know, yeah. go work for Hero Outdoors. Um, <laughs> dang, sounds like someone got burned recently. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess uh, we'll start wrapping this up. Um, yeah. we forgot our famous uh, path question. Um, I think oh. you know which one it is. Someone okay. want to yeah. ask that? Mackie, Michael, Ali- do you consider Airsoft a hobby or a sport? Oh, you mm. forgot the third one because he works for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this um, point, it is a job? Question mark? <laughs> question mark? Um, airsoft can be a sport. Um, it can be a hobby. It's what you put into it. It's what your drive is how you apply it to your daily life because let's let's be honest uh monday through friday can't go fast enough because our heart is really on the weekends playing our sport yep yeah. um and at the same time when you start tinkering with it it becomes a hobby unfortunately if you're crazy like me and you want to be uh, pushing it into bigger bounds and and, and helping that's, legitimize that's us. it that's us yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it's definitely how you know, we're all trying to promote it. And then it turns into a business. That's yep. when that's, that's a fine line, but um, it's about how serious or not how serious you take the sport. So uh, I'd say it leans mostly to a sport to me um, only because of the, the, the training aspects and how do I apply it in the community. Right. Um, hobby is something you do only a little mm. bit. So it's, it's really an involvement. Okay. Uh, so then my question, my, or at least my last question is, is that are you, are you trying to, with, with, you know, with your organization and everything like that, carve a pathway that has a, another possible avenue for Airsoft to possibly have a sport involvement in? Yes, ab- absolutely. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of in our, our mission statement. Mm-hmm. Um, like our mission statements, like, you know, uh, who we are, uh, we're founded upon a cadre of real world experience and application. It is our aim to educate players and competitors, both new or seasoned, including the general public, not normally exposed to the sport about the beneficial marksmanship training you can have through the airsoft experience. Mm. Okay. That's beautiful. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is beautiful. And yeah, we've just went over what... BCMF does and just keep on chugging because we will happily promote you guys, especially with these uh, SOP training courses that you're offering. Because, um, in my belief, um, it's something that's needed in airsoft. And, you know, someone like yourself who has real world experience, training, and the know how, the knowledge, um, that's hard to find. So, thank you very much for joining us Mm -hmm. and as well as uh, letting us know that this is happening because yeah i think it's it's just one of those things that i feel that airsoft needs Mm -hmm. this standardization 
<clears throat> expect a pan <clears throat> segment in uh, live in the field at one of your <laughs> things. <laughs> well, we don't want to, you know, we got to make, we got to make sure they we make money. Right? And don't, here, don't, okay? don't, don't, don't worry. We will blur everything that's not Off relevant. Sec. <laughs> all right so we'll close it off here this is episode 82 um this is getting to know british columbia airsoft markets federation uh thank you again uh michael and um i'm sure we'll have you again for a uh, host of other topics um mm. as, as well as military updates. and as mm. well as trainings mm -hmm. um that's going on updates um name it um yeah we'd like to have you again for sure. And uh, Tack, you want to do the closing statements here for, um, for our channel? Okay. Well, all right, guys. Uh, this has been, as Poi has says, episode 82 of the Panther Airsoft Folding Table Talk. If you have liked us talk and like to hear us keep talking, don't forget to hit that uh, like and subscribe button. Uh, and if you guys want to get updated on when these videos come out all the time, hit that uh, notification bell. Uh, with that said, we love you guys, love peace and chicken grease, and we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, I just want to say something. Oh, okay. Well, Mac can... Uh... No, no, no. Last words, guys. Episode 82, but happy birthday, 2-8. 100%. Happy birthday, 2-8. Happy birthday, 2-8. Uh, happy 1st. birthday, 2-8. <laughs> Look it up, guys. 2-8. All right. August 1st. Or, sorry, no. Um, April 1st. <laughs> Wrong A. <laughs> wow. Wrong A. If anyone's still Goodbye. watching, we love Goodbye. you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.